three, two, one. Hi and good afternoon and welcome to this uh, Facebook live chat from uh, Outserve Web Headquarters. Uh, I hope that everything's coming uh, coming through okay on the Facebook live. Uh, today I've got with me uh, Steve Cranston from Lilac Films. Uh, good afternoon, Steve. Thank you, let me join you. No problem at all. Uh, Steve, very briefly, can you just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do and what your, your business Lilac Films does? Yeah, sure. So I'm Steve. I'm the company director of Lilac Films. We do uh, video marketing, essentially, for uh, everyone from large blue chips. Uh, we work with Dunelm. We work fre frequently with HSU Master. Um, and we also work with small businesses to help them uh, do promotional films, educate with their customers about their products and services, and also train them using the smartphone, using what we call our iPhone course, to film edit and distribute media using nothing but your smartphone oh uh, that sounds interesting i've got to get on that that course and uh, and learn a bit, a bit more about it but i'm i'm guessing you're just the right person to talk about the the phenomenon which is it appears to be live broadcasting broadcasting even or facebook live what, what do you think about facebook live but you, you, the most exciting thing about facebook live is that it's changed film from being something that is uh well it is only available to broadcasters to suddenly anyone can stream live. Periscope, I think, was the first to do that. And then suddenly Facebook Live has just taken over the world. Uh, what it's done is it's made it accessible for everyone to have an event and connect nationwide or internationally with people on there. So I've started using live broadcast for my training courses. So as a way of giving a sample to it, we'll broadcast the first half hour where we do some classroom teaching in there. And deal with interaction and I, I just do it through my Facebook page so from people I'm connected to because I look at it like this that where LinkedIn is where most of my business connections are actually I'm, I'm connected on Facebook now to probably three four hundred business owners and and my thoughts are well how many of those have actually been on my course and seen what I've done for this and I know that Facebook the way that algorithm works is that they really really push live video so if you're doing a live video stream like this you quickly get pushed to the top of the queue and get an announcement that comes out to sort of say such and such is live or is going live at this time if you pre-plan it. And they really plug it hard for you. Same if you use Facebook for video uploading. If, if instead of using YouTube and embedding it, you upload straight to Facebook, you'll see about a 10 times increase in the interactions you get organically without even having to go down the paid advert route for it. So what you're saying, Steve, you're seeing and is this on business pages as well that video posted there whether it's from youtube or natively within facebook or facebook live is, is getting a lot more traction and facebook are actually pushing it onto more people's streams and further up the, the, the stream for people to see i mean facebook clearly wants visual media um i wouldn't say youtube gets you any more traction than it has been historically but facebook video both uh, especially live video gets you significantly more traction than if you were to put out say a, a, a picture or a traditional post that youtube is desperately trying to get you to use the service so the incentive they're giving is well we will plug this heavily for you so if you're a business owner on your business page live streaming you're likely to reach organically over 10 times what you traditionally reach with a normal post because of how facebook will push that as an example to others to say look at what this business is doing with live streaming video so would you be recommending all businesses to be using facebook live well, let's, let's take some examples there for that, because there's a clearly a relevancy to it that if you're going to send someone to sleep or you're going to do something where it's live streaming for the sake of it, then it, all it's going to reflect is that you're an uncreative, uninnovative business. So doing things like this, these kind of conversations where people can drop in and out of them, um, interact and post questions, I think is a great starting point. That should be something that all businesses should think about. If they've got a new product that is going to be of interest to a proportion of their followers, I think absolutely they should get experts on there and have a conversation like this where they have a bit of a sort of like back and forth talk about something. If you're someone, so say news for example, news has really taken off with Periscope and Facebook Live because they can stream very easily and very quickly without to do any technical setup from the events. So when you've got things like uh, what the election just gone past, we've got to be reactive with the news. Um, when you've got riots, for example, that are happening, you now have people live streaming from this, giving on the ground news and information updates. So if you're a business that's particularly engaged with um, 
contemporary news and, and current affairs and things like that. Absolutely, Facebook Live is, is a fantastic opportunity for it. The other big thing, of course, is events. So if you're attending uh, main sort of large events that you know will have a lot of interest to your followers, simply streaming from there, I should add with the permission from the organisers, will be a huge boost because one, it's, it's a way of um, giving people a glimpse into your world. So, I mean, that's one of the taglines we use now at Live at Films. You want to give customers a glimpse into your world of what you can do and what you are all about. But also, it lets them, um, it lets them freely gain an experience that they want to have. And experience, I think, is a key thing that we talk about here. You're giving customers a platform to access things that would have been otherwise unreachable to them. They'd have had to wait for the, um, the edited video to come out maybe months later. Whereas now, they can be there immediately. And the smart platforms and the smart event organisers are giving access to people that are on the live streams, on the webinars, to interact with them directly so they can answer questions from them, make them feel really part of the of the performers of the show. So musicians doing this frequently as well, doing live practices or warm-ups to the gigs or sound checks. And it's a real great way just to really engage your audience. By far the best way I've seen and one of the most exciting pieces of technology. So just run that past me again. So let people glimpse into your world. Was that what you said, Steve? Well, yeah, it's, it's like we're doing live streaming. It's effectively showing people snapshots of your world in real time. So you go to an event, you you um, launch a new product. Uh, for me, maybe sort of like we're an exciting customer site. We were at the launch of the Big Sleuth campaign with the bears that have gone across Birmingham where there's 200 life-size bears that have been painted by artists and be able to do a short live script stream to sort of say, hi everyone, I just want to show you where we're at today. We're here with 200 bears. Something exciting and something visual like that is taking the next step and saying that, you know what, let's not just take a picture of this post on Twitter. Let's live stream for a minute, two minutes and give a little glimpse into what we're doing today to get people excited about where we're at. So that's what I mean when I say a glimpse into your world. Um, would you just literally live stream that from the from the phone on, on Facebook Live then? So you... Just the phone from that as well. There's some great devices that you can use with it. So you can have um, uh, an Osmo, um, which is made by DJI. And that is a stabilizer, which you can sort of, you can handhold and it stops with a camera shake. So if you're at, a, at an event, you want to pan around. So you don't make your viewers seasick. It's, um, it's a low cost device you can buy. I think it's about two hundred pounds, and it will just stabilise your phone very, very effectively. And it just has a clip on, like an iPhone holder, that you can use for it. But yeah, technology wise, I think phones are one of the most exciting pieces of, of technology for broadcast. I mean, to give you an example, I was at an event last week where three broadcasters turned up with mobile phones rather than full size cameras because they said, well. We don't need a satellite truck this way. We can broadcast to ITV in standard definition quality with our iPhones. And the viewers actually won't notice much quality difference. There's a few restrictions to there. Um, the big one being sound. I get good quality sound to it because iPhone mics um, are good, but in a noisy environment aren't up to much. So there's a lot of companies now making plugins and add-ons to phones. So you can plug in um, probably microphones are worth 10 times what the phones are worth but will give you that broadcast quality sounds but when you think about it gathering visuals has never been easier with the access you've got from your phone so again you too would you plug in an external mic into a mobile phone to give you the the sound quality yeah, personally i'd recommend the rode video mic um, which is an add-on that just um, plugs into if you're on an iphone 6 or below unfortunately iphone 7 users you've lost your headphone socket um, but you're, yeah. you're Samsung, aren't you, Phil? You're a Samsung user. So if you were to plug in uh, this microphone on it, it just gives a, a bit of a boost to the audio quality where it's still directional, which means when you point the mic, we'll get the best sound feed. And if someone's further away, it's going to be a weak signal. But I'd say, actually, it's, um, it's, it's, it's good enough. And people are becoming more and more accustomed to seeing this because most of what's on YouTube is shot with mobile phones. A large portion of what's on the news shot with mobile phones as well. So the familiarity of seeing things that sound and look like they're shot with mobile phones, it's no longer something that makes you sort of think, I'm not so sure about that. So it's, um, it's making me feel a bit seasick. We're very familiar with the technology now. So how much is one of those mics while we're talking about cost and buying things? £50. Pounds. Right. And the, the, was it the Osmo you were talking about to, for holding it? Is that just a glorified yeah. self? Yeah, 
the Osmo stabilizer by DJI, which is um, just over 200 pounds. And it's like a sat nav holder that fits your phone into it. And then a stabilization unit, very, very light. It weighs um, uh, probably no more than a kilogram. And if that's in fact, and it will allow you to just move around with the device, you hand hold it and basically it um, just stabilizes everything. It's fantastic quality as well. I highly recommend it. Yeah, we can put some, we'll have to get some links to this. I'll do some, some notes. Is there a cheaper version than the 200 pound stick? <laughs> no, that, 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 I mean, that is, um, that is a first. So as far as I'm aware, there's nothing else out there. Oh. But I mean, these are, that, that's for someone that is taking this seriously. If you're a business owner that's saying, um, we're going to do live streaming regularly. Well, actually, when you think about promotional films, you may be paying 1500 pounds per film for a promotional film that you're doing. So 200 pounds for an Osmo, actually for something that is going to be able to be reused and recycled isn't the biggest expense in the world for that. So I'd say if it's a, if it's a one-off thing, yeah, it's just a toy in that case. But if you're going to take it seriously, do live streaming regularly, it's absolutely a must-have piece of equipment for that. And you think this is accessible to your sort of general high street small business? Absolutely. I mean, the cost of all the technology, I mean, without Ivan Ogby course, the kit we... Um, we tell you to kick your phone out with after the course will cost you less than 60 pounds. That's microphone, tripod, holder for it, um, an adapter so you can listen to the sound as well. And that gives you near close to what would have been maybe to like five, six years ago, a professional setup on there. The lenses you can add onto the phone as well to make it work almost like a digital SLR camera. The apps that you can purchase, I mean, the apps cost pounds. The, the, the equipment, I mean, again, Technology equipment is is crashing in price because there's so much competition out there, and the technology is, is being so widely manufactured. I mean, China embracing capitalism has been a huge benefit for the market because most of the equipment is coming from over there. But actually, the standard of it is good. It's very good, in fact, what they're, they're offering out to small business owners. So the restriction is no longer the cost of technology. The restriction is the knowledge and the ability to know how to use that type of technology. I presume this is where your iPhoneography course comes in, Steve. Is that, are you saying? Oh, yeah. I never just put a self just plug in there like that, but as you did, yeah, that's, that's absolutely where the, the course would come in. Our vision is we want, um, with the course, we're not seeking to replace ourselves, we're not trying to put ourselves out of business. I mean, very foolish of us. We're seeking to see our customers do more with video, to treat it like social media, where they're interacting with their customers regularly. They're not saying, well, we'll just put one or two films out a year. They're saying, We'll go to a live event and one of our team will stream it. We then may have a product launch where we'll have a professional film made for that launch, but we'll also stream the live event. We may then have one or two customer testimonials, which we'll capture after the event as quick 30 second snapshots on our iPhone because we've done the iPhone obviously training course for that. So it's how can we get our customers putting more media out there? Because we, we've seen that the things that create success with this, like for any social media, are regular engagements, regular contact with your customers. If they get used to a regular upload schedule where you say we're going to upload a new film weekly or monthly to start with, then there's a familiarity to that. And that's when engagement starts. When it's a one-off where you upload a new film, you put store the work and all the driving. Whereas when you do it regularly, you're building and start creating building blocks for businesses. No, that sounds great. So I think the question was, would you ever see yourself live streaming the, the course, the iPhoneography course? We do. We absolutely do. I mean, in fact, if you look back through the Facebook feed, you'll see that the last course had the first hour streamed live. And the idea of that was uh, first as a sample, but also so we had a record that we could give to our delegates. Because, of course, when you live stream, it's not just logging in live that's, that counts for it. It's that you have a record of that moment that can be then shared anytime into, sort of like, into the future. So our, our, our idea was they come on the course there's a lot of information we give them in a short space of time. And rather than just having notes, they may want to see a demonstration repeated. And if it's live streamed, they can simply go back and watch the live stream again and see how we do the technique and then put it into practice themselves. So for us, it's very much an archiving facility of, well, and a, and a time save as well at that, of saying, here's the information from the course and also here's a video from the course that we've created with minimal work. We simply do it with a simple camera mic on our, on our iPhone and record it live and, and put it out there. So we're doing promoting, archiving, and education, all in one in that with very minimal effort. And so can anyone go and see that archive footage to see what the course is like, Steve? 
Yeah, absolutely. What is? I'll give you the share of that so you can put that in the links below so they can see. The the... People maybe on audio or don't get a chance to see the links later. What what Facebook is it? The Lilac Films Facebook page. Yeah, it will be shared through the Lilac Films Facebook page, and also it's actually, it's actually my personal one that I shared it on because that's where our strongest hub is. We've never actually really put the Lilac Films Facebook page. So with that in mind, you look at where the numbers are. So the numbers were on my personal Facebook page, but of course then you can reshare it through other sources. You can share it to the Lilac Films Facebook page. And elsewhere for that. I think it's interesting how all the technology is running out. As, as I understand it, there is more functionality for Facebook Live on a personal profile page than there is on the business pages. We're streaming uh, this live on a business page, but actually we're having to use uh, an additional piece of software or a website called Be Live to get side. So you can see Steve and me on one side, uh, etc. That actually comes from additional. Uh, functionality from VLive. I believe that is available as normal on a personal profile and hopefully we'll see that we'll see that roll out. I have to ask the same question as I always ask as Steve, your iPhoneography course, can I can I bring my my Samsung S S seven? And um, is there apps and add ons and so I can do or do even a better job than an iPhone? Samsung actually has a quite a few advantages over it. I think it's got a better editing platform than iPhone has. iPhone currently has uh, iMovie, obviously, which is the main one made by Apple. It's good. We don't actually teach on the movie because it's got a few holes in it. We teach on an app called Splice. Um, but on the Samsung, I think the app that, is, that we teach on there is significantly better than both of those, which is Cyberlink Power Director. And for those of you that have, have, have done any media before, you've probably seen the name Cyberlink on the lower end editing products. But Cyberlink were the first to realize that there's a niche in the market for um, consumers and prosumers. That want, to, um, that, that want to edit in a tablet form, so touch screen editing. And what they've basically done is they've taken their very, very user-friendly computer, um, uh, um, computer-based software and made it into an app. So you've got largely all the same features. It's very, very intuitive what you can do with it and also very quick to use. So absolutely, Samsung users have no problem with it, being able to cut high-end film together. The only ones we have a problem with at the moment are Windows phones, so Nokia's, unfortunately, um, still don't have suitable apps for it. So we do say to Windows Phone users, unfortunately, unless you can purchase an iOS device or an Android device, you're going to be left in the dark a little bit for it because for some reason, Windows just hasn't seen the golden opportunity they've got with this technology. They're very focused on touchscreen and looking at building up their Windows shop, but it just baffles me why they haven't done more for their consumers like Apple have and like Android have. I mean, we know Google and Apple are, are very much customer facing, what can we do for the consumer market is very much on both their minds for it. But Windows just haven't, haven't taken them on at all. Yeah, uh, and what about tablets and, and the iPad? Is there, would you, would you use an iPad to capture and do live, live streams or is there good editing software for tablets? Uh, editing software is exactly the same as phones now as well. So when we talk about um, uh, tablets and phones, we try and talk to them more about the device that they're on. So if they're on iOS, which is all of Apple's devices, or if they're on Android, then the principles apply across the board. There's a few apps where they're only phone compatible, but all the ones we teach on are universal across both tablets and phones. So really, it's indifferent whether you're using a tablet or a phone. The only downside to tablets is they're slightly more clunky and cumbersome, but there's actually some great advantages to them. Like, for example, if you like to use teleprompters, so if you're someone that sort of thinks, you know what, I just can't talk live on camera, I'll, I'll freeze up, I'll lose my trail of what to say. Then having a teleprompter of scripted things that you can say that will pan down in front of you while the camera records you is, is a great feature. So that's where we tend to recommend tablets. People that sort of say, I'm just not natural in front of the camera. I'm, I'm much prefer being able to read something off it. And we say, well, let's start using a tablet, have a large screen on there and have words on so you can scroll it. Very, very clever app. So what we recommend is called Teleprompter Pro. It's... Four nine nine in the app store, and it basically uses the camera app to record you and creates a little box in the corner of your tablet, and then puts some words in large text that scroll, and you can control it with your iPhone, scroll it back and forth for it. On the Android devices, there's an app called iPrompt Pro, which isn't quite as intuitive, uh, but it's, again, it's still a very good app where it will let you scroll and record at the same time. I think that's been fantastic. I think we've we've packed this twenty minutes full of of information and and a recommendation of products. And we're really cheeky as well, Steve. Would you be able to put those all those links and and send me them over, and I'll put them in the 
in the in the notes on wherever we post this uh and and again any any link to your iphoneography course as well uh yeah. ask if, if they were gonna if if listeners are gonna follow you anywhere where would you direct them to steve uh, so best place to follow us we're on twitter at lilac films uh, most of our um our interaction actually happens on vimeo that's where most of our new media for business is posted so that's vimeo.com forward slash lilac um, and that's our main hub for video interaction we of course use youtube um, youtube is more something that we use as a showcase and a platform because for creatives it, and, and this is actually quite a good point to come on to so i struck the question slightly here but for business i'd say if you're uh, a, a more commercial business youtube is absolutely the right place to be if you're creative or an artist or, or something in the creative field a musician for example vimeo is your hub for it mainly because of user base that they collected vimeo realized they couldn't take on youtube in the same way so they created a hub for creatives and artists and that's why we started using it quite heavily because it's a lot more flexible than youtube they looked at what youtube didn't do and they said we're going to do that and we're going to make it appeal to creatives and artists. So YouTube is it's great for mass numbers, mass interaction. Uh, the second most searched on search engine. You can find us at um, youtube.com forward slash users forward slash lilac film productions. But I'd say when think about which platform to use, there's no harm in using multiple ones for it. But YouTube is it's still a bit of a a mass market niche you're 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 a small fish in a very 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 fast big pond whereas actually with vimeo you can get some of the same seo benefits and be a much bigger fish in smaller ponds so it's it's working that balance out there for it as well but twitter at line of films is our main protocol call for that and you still recommend you could if you wanted to put the same video onto vimeo and onto youtube that there'd be no downside to that at, at the moment, there's, there's no real issue to that. The only issue would be is that you're defining where the attention's going. So we'd say that if you're going to launch the film initially, launch it on one, and then maybe a month or a week later, upload it to the second one, see so it's spreading that. But it's just so you can focus the initial burst of interaction when you're promoting it to one place so you don't have to track two sources for it. The only downside is, is, is that, basically. There's, there's no issue with having a video uploaded to two sort of sources other than you're dividing where the viewing is taking place. I think that's been fantastic. And I, I really appreciate your time, Steve, going through all that full, absolutely rammed, rammed full of tips. So the, the plan then, this video should be available on the Answer web page to, to watch. Uh, also, we'll be looking to get the audio down and put it into to SoundCloud. And I myself will look at you know what different ways we can share this. And again, if you can send me the links to all of those things you mentioned, the products, the apps. Yeah. Uh, and, and your iPhoneography course, I think that would be great to go along with any of the, the content we're doing. So uh, I think it just leaves me to say thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cranston. Have a, enjoy the rest of your sunny Friday afternoon. Uh, and I will speak again soon. Thank you very much, Phil. It's been a pleasure. Take care.